Today I've got a nice little snack of a problem that comes from the 1989 Irish Math Olympiad and it concerns magic squares. So let's define a 3x3 three three magic square with magic number n to be a matrix built out of positive integers so that all of the rows add to m, all of the columns add to m, and both diagonals also add to m. So our goal is to show that here m must be divisible by 3, or otherwise known as a multiple of 3, or maybe even better, m equals 3n for some natural number n. And then we'll follow that up by showing that in this setup, every entry is less than or equal to 2n minus 1. Okay, so let's get started. So let's consider the following 3x3 three three magic square. So I'm going to label the entries as A1, B1, and C1 in the first row. Maybe like A2, B2, C2 in the second row, and then A3, B3, and C3 in the third row. And then the trick here is to, instead of looking at the sum of the rows, the columns, and the diagonals, is to break this down into more manageable pieces. And so I'll look at the sum of all of the diagonal entries. Not the diagonals, but just the entries on the diagonal. So let's circle those here, 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 and here. And let's introduce that notation. So maybe I'll call that x. So let's set x equal to, like I said, a1 plus c1 plus a3 plus c3. So that's the sum of the diagonal entries. Next, I'll look at the sum of what I'll call the midpoint entries. So those are the midpoints of each of the edges, if you will. So let's circle those in green. So like I said, those will be like our midpoint entries. And so here, let's set those equal to some other number. So let's set those equal to y. So that's going to be a2 plus b1 plus c2 plus b3. Okay, nice. And then we've got one more entry there, and that's the center entry. And it kind of makes sense that it would play its own role. And let's maybe give that the name Z. So let's set Z equal to just B2. Now, of course, we don't need to give that another name, but we're doing that just to like keep things maybe look kind of fairly similar to what we did before. And now the idea is to sum diagonals or rows or something in this magic square and put those sums in terms of x, y, and z. So let's see, if we wanted to put a sum in terms of x, it wouldn't be enough to sum a single diagonal, we'd have to sum two diagonals. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So like I said, we will sum both diagonals. So let's maybe make a picture of what we're doing here. So there's our magic square. And so here we're taking this sum plus this sum. But we should know exactly what that is because we know both sums are m. So that means the total value is 2m. But then, in terms of our new variables over here, that's going to be x, those diagonals, plus 2 times z, because we go through the center twice. So like I said, we have x plus 2 times z equals 2m. So there's like a nice equation that we might be able to work with. Okay. So next up, what we want to do is somehow use our row sum or our column sum. And we'll do that by summing what I'll call the cross. And so what I mean by that is the middle column as well as the middle row. That'll take advantage of these midpoint entries that we talked about before. Okay, so let's look at the picture here. That would be a sum of these types of things. Okay, so kind of parallel to what we saw over there, that will give us y plus 2z. 
So it's Y kind of for obvious reasons because we hit all of these midpoint objects and it's two times Z because we go through the center twice. So we have Y plus two times Z and that is again two times M because we summed a row and a column. And we know that all of the rows and the columns add up to the same thing. And then next we're gonna take our total sum. So that should be pretty easy to calculate because we could do that a number of different ways. We could do that the first row, the second row, the third row, that would be M plus M plus M. We could do it the first column, the second column, the third column, that would be another M plus M plus M. Any way you do it, you get to three M. But notice by our partitioning of all of those entries, that's also exactly X plus Y plus Z. Okay, so now we've got a system of equations. And perhaps we can solve this system of equations for M. And the way I look at it, there's an obvious way to get a single M. And that would be to add these two equations, the first two equations, and then subtract the second equation. So let's see what that leaves us with. So that'll, that'll leave us with 2M plus 2M minus M otherwise known as just M. And then over on the right hand side, we'll have X plus 2Z plus this next thing, which is Y plus 2Z, and then minus this sum of all of them, X plus Y plus Z. So something like that. But what's great is we get a really nice simplification over there on the right hand side. Notice that for instance, this X term cancels with this X term. Next up, this Y term cancels with this Y term. And then we have 2Z plus 2Z minus Z, which is otherwise known as 3Z. So we have M equals three times Z. But that's the first part of this problem to show that M is three times an integer. It just turns out that that integer happens to be the central element here or the central entry of our magic square. And now we have to work with this inequality and the inequality in this setup goes like this. So all entries should be less than or equal to two times Z minus one based off this rule over here. Well, notice that the center is immediately less than or equal to two times Z minus one as it's just Z itself. And since we're taking from natural numbers, we have it. So all we need to do is look at all of the other entries. And we'll do that by taking a sum that goes through the center, either this middle column, this middle row, or one of the diagonals. But all of these are very similar, so we're gonna focus on a single diagonal, and that diagonal will be the one that goes down and right. Okay, so focusing on that diagonal, we have A1, plus B2 plus C3 equals M. Okay, but let's notice that B2 is equal to Z by our notation up here, and M is equal to 3Z by what we already showed. So now moving some things around, we have A1 plus C3 is equal to 2 times Z. But now since A1 and C3 are positive integers, otherwise known as natural numbers, we know the largest they could be is 2Z minus one. Because if any of them are larger than 2Z minus one, then this sum will not hold. So in other words, we can say here A1 and C3, well, let's put it like this. They're bigger than or equal to one and less than or equal to two Z minus one. Then that can be repeated for the other diagonal as well as the central row and the central column to do the same thing for the other entries. And that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.